troubles go, I have seen the sparrow.
I've never been good at change If I'm honest, it's always scared me But I can't deny this stirring deep inside me And I know it's time to stop resisting Cause I'm not getting any younger Fear is such a sad way to live a life So face to the wind, I'm jumping out I'm walking in every single thing you want to show me To the ups and downs, the highs and lows The taking in Letting go to the tears and laughter, the great unknown, to the open journey into faith I go. Nobody said this would be easy. Anyone who didn't ever went through. Anything painful, but faith is not some fragile thing that shatters when we walk through something hard. So we walk on, whatever may come, to the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the taking. When I feel like giving up When I feel like throwing it all away I look back over my shoulder And I can see your goodness Every single step that I have taken And it beats like a drum And it rings the bell Oh, and it sings like a choir And it's lead me on my way Oh, you lead me on my way To the ups and downs The highs and lows To the taking When I lose my way and I forget my name, my new I am. In the camera, all I show someone I don't really know. Remind me who I am. In the loneliest places, 
When I can't remember what grace is Tell me once again who I am to you Who I am to you Tell me lest I forget who I am to you That I belong to like a stone cause I'm stuck inside my home remind me who I am and I can't receive your love afraid I'll never be enough remind me who I am if I'm your beloved can you help me believe Hey, good morning, Grace Church. Morning. Welcome to worship today. My name's Andrew. I'm glad you're here. Glad we are able to all gather here together to worship God. Uh, if you would, would you raise your hand if you have been created? All right. Then by definition, you are a creature. So let's stand and worship our God along with all creatures of our God and King. Let's give thanks for the glory of creation as we sing these words. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Silver gleam, oh praise ye, oh praise ye, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh brother, when air clouds and rain, by which all creatures. 
nature's ye sustain. Oh, praise ye, alleluia, thou rising morning, praise rejoice. Ye lights of evening, find a voice. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye, alleluia, alleluia. Good morning, church. Please be seated. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I know that we have a number of people who are in in worship this morning who are here because you are visiting loved ones and are in the neighborhood. For that reason, and we welcome you this morning, welcome to Grace. For those of you who are visiting because it's your first time ever coming here and maybe you are uh, looking for a church community, we are happy and thrilled to have you here with us this morning. And uh, everyone who is a regular here, well, welcome to you too. Glad to have you at Grace. Grace is a warm-hearted, deep-thinking, Bible-based, inclusive community of Christ followers. And we are so thankful to uh, live the gospel message with all of you today. So for those of you who are visiting, uh, we hope that at some point in the service, that as the attendance pads make their way down the rows, that you sign in. Let us know that you are here and that uh, if you leave an email address, a phone number, a street address, we'd love to reach out with a word of welcome to you in the coming days. And uh, to all of you, just be on the lookout for there is so much going on. You're going to be hearing more about that as we wrap up this season of the church year because next Sunday, we begin a brand new year on the church calendar with the start of the Advent season, and we'll be sharing more about the upcoming events very soon, but be sure, as always, to keep a look at your calendar, your newsletter, and the bulletin each Sunday morning when you come to worship. So if you did not grab one on your way in, grab one on your way out, because it's chock full of information about upcoming events. I would also say, like to say a special word of welcome to all of those who are here to help us celebrate Theo's baptism today. We are so excited about that. We know that we've got a couple of people. We know that because the front rows are filled this morning that we must have a baptism. Uh, and so we are so excited to have all of you here. Welcome for this special occasion and this beautiful event as we share this sacrament together and celebrate this morning. As we continue our worship, would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we are people filled with hope and joy and expectation. This week has been one, hopefully, 
for most of us, a time of, of gathering with loved ones, to count our blessings, to travel or to stay nearby, but most of all, to lift up our prayers of gratitude to you. We thank you, God, for bringing us safely to this place today. We thank you for all the reasons, for, for all the reasons that this world is, is not the place that you desire it to be. We are thankful that as we look around into the faces and into the eyes of friends, neighbors, and family, we see a glimpse of what the world could be. It reminds us of your ongoing work and your presence in our lives. It reminds us of the task that we have at hand to be good neighbors, to reach out in concern and service and love to a world that is hurting and in need. We thank you, God, that we, for the most part, have had enough, enough to fill our stomachs, enough to keep us warm and dry at night, enough to realize that we must consider ourselves to be among some of the most fortunate people in the world. But with that comes responsibility. And so we thank you, God, for continuing to press upon us the words of the prophets, the teachings of Jesus, the message of the gospel that proclaims hope in the midst of hardship, that proclaims love surrounded sometimes by hate, and proclaims a message of life and resurrection where death is present. So help us to carry that message. Help us to be a lighthouse of faith. Help us to be a city on a hill and salt of the earth so that others might recognize in us that there is something different about the people called Christian, different about what it means to be the body of Christ, and help us to share a message of love and hope and joy with all of those around us. We remember that in this season of gratitude. We remember that this morning as we gather for worship, for sacrament, for proclamation of the word. And we lift these things up to you in the name of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as he taught his followers, so now we proclaim together these eternal words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, it is a special day because we get to celebrate a baptism this morning, and so I would like at this time to invite Theo and his family forward, as well as his grandmother, Cheryl, who you may recognize as a familiar face. Cheryl is uh, one of our former district superintendents here in our district, and uh, she has preached here on occasion, and so we are glad to welcome Cheryl back, but most importantly, because she is the grandmother today. And so she is very much going to have a huge role in the baptism today. And so, Cheryl, why don't you just okay. join All right. right over here. And so, folks, I want to remind you that the sacrament of baptism identifies a person as a child of God. Those who are baptized are initiated into Christ's holy church. The water of baptism is a symbol of new life. And today we celebrate that because of Jesus Christ, we are incorporated into God's act of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, freely given, because God loves us. Today, friends, we witness and we join in and we celebrate the baptism of Theodore Levi Webb, the son of Trent and Laura, and little brother of Cooper. And so now I ask, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you now to make your commitment to faithful discipleship. Laura and Trent, do you believe that God loves you, forgives you, and claims you and your child for faithful life? If so, say, I do. Do you believe that God gives you freedom and responsibility as a follower of Christ? If you do, say, I do. Are you committed to growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ through the ministry and fellowship of the church? <laughs> if so, say, I do. And will you live for Theo in your words and your actions, the gospel message of service and commitment so that he will grow in relationship with Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. 
And you who are the body of Christ present this morning, will you assist these parents by fulfilling these baptismal vows, by praying for them and nurturing this family by your teaching and example. So Theo will be guided to accept God's love and forgiveness, profess his faith in Christ openly, and live a Christian life if in service to others. If so, pr please proclaim, we will. We will. And you who have been baptized, will you also renew the vows of your own baptisms today and give yourself again to Christ Jesus? Let each baptized person here say with great joy and honest commitment, I will. I, I will. will. Let us pray. Oh God, we recognize your love in the life of Theo and his family. You have blessed them from the moment you brought their lives together. Help us as a church to live faithfully and proclaim your good news boldly as we surround this family with love and forgiveness that is centered in you. Guide us and teach us so that we may all grow and deepen our relationship with you. Amen. Theodore Levi, I baptize you in the name of the one who creates you, sustains you, and blesses you the days of your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's all play a hand on Theo. Yes. Cooper, you want to put your hand in there, bud? All right. Theo, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we're going to have the family come down the center aisle and have you have a chance to have a, a new look at your brother in Christ up close. But let's congratulate them and celebrate this moment with the Web family. Awesome. I love that. As we, uh, just as we invite Theo into the church and, and, uh, and acknowledge that God makes a way for Theo, God makes a way for each one of us. As we continue to worship, why don't we stand and sing together again and, and let's, let's focus on a time in our life where we felt God's presence or we acknowledge that God has done work in, that, in our life. And let's look to, look to God and acknowledge God as, as one who, who makes ways for us and is continuing, still continuing to work miracles in our lives.
you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop, even when I don't see it Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop, Jesus, you are You never stop working, you never stop, oh Lord. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you are. God, we acknowledge you as one who makes ways and works miracles and keeps promises. We trust you. We have faith in you. Amen. Church, will you join me as we proclaim our faith through the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing these words of our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. take just a couple of minutes and say hello to a couple of the people around us.
Good morning. All right. Well, again, I want to welcome you to Grace, the United Methodist Congregation. We're so glad that you're here this morning. My name is Stephen Ingram, and I just want to give you a few announcements this morning of, of some things that will be going on over the uh, coming weeks. You know what? I think the lights are down there. I'm going to go down here. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's so much better. Okay. Now I can't see any of you. It's just great. Uh, so a few, I, I was seeing way too many faces like this feels unusual. So there we go. I'm, I can't tell whether you like me or not now. So this is great. So um, uh, a few announcements of, of upcoming things that will be happening in the life of the congregation. As I go through those, if you don't mind, go ahead and grab those pads on the ends of your rows. Uh, fill those out. Let us know that you're here. Uh, if you're a if you're a guest, we'd especially love to know that you're here uh, so that we can uh, uh, let you know a little bit more about who we are, what we do here, and uh, find out some more about you uh, as well. So if you can, just grab those and pass those down uh, the rows. Uh, the first announcement uh, is just a, a reminder. If you signed up to help decorate for Advent after the service today, uh, just a reminder that that's happening. We'll have some food. Uh, there will be a, a number of us gathered here doing that. So uh, if you signed up for that, uh, we are excited to see you right after the service today uh, to decorate for Advent. I uh, also want to uh, give you a reminder that our Cookies, Carols, and Cocoa uh, night, which we did for the first time last year, was a ton of fun. We did it at the park. Uh, just over here uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, we did that. We had a blast. There were a ton of folks that showed up uh, to come and sing some songs to, to just really uh, live into that kind of festive spirit together. Uh, tons of kids. So it's just a really wonderful uh, event, really low-key, easy to come in and out of. Uh, we want to invite you to that. Uh, that will be uh, this Thursday, uh, November 30th, uh, at 6.30 uh, in the park just right over here uh, in the neighborhood. If you don't know what park that is, it doesn't even have a name, I don't think. On it's on Lake Parkway, but the park doesn't have a name. So it's the park on Lake Parkway, okay? Uh, so uh, if, you, uh, if you need any help finding that, please call the church office this week. We'll be happy to help you uh, figure out which park uh, to go to. Uh, also, just a uh, reminder that uh, we are uh, full swing into Angel Tree. Amazing news. Already, every single angel has been, has been taken, uh, and uh, so that's really amazing. I, I think that's a, a really beautiful thing. We, we are literally not even in December yet, and uh, every angel is gone. So that's a, that's a really beautiful testament uh, of you and your generosity. Now, if you're some of those folks who are a little late to the game, and you're like, oh, darn, I didn't get an angel. Well, guess what? There's still an opportunity for you to serve. So uh, we'll be having a, an event uh, here on December the 17th at 6 o'clock called Holly Jolly. Uh, and that's an event where we're bringing in folks uh, from the community, uh, where we'll be distributing gifts, uh, but also just having a lot of fun together uh, in, in the Christmas spirit. There'll be activities for the children. So if you have not... Uh, if you were not able to get an angel or you just want to continue that uh, giving spirit, uh, there are plenty of ways for you to participate in Holly Jolly. Uh, and also, the last but not least, uh, the back table, I don't know if you've noticed, but there are a, uh, a lot of canned goods and a lot of food back there. Uh, if you have not turned in your food uh, for this food drive, uh, please do so today. Uh, we'll be here at the church for an extra couple of hours today decorating. And so if you are like, oh, um, I forgot it, run home, grab it, bring it back. We'll still be here uh, today for a couple of more hours. Uh, let's see. Other, uh, yep, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So uh, other than that, uh, we're so glad that you're here uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to have a time where we're able to give our gifts and our offerings and our tithes this morning. So as the ushers come forward, you can do that in person by, by giving in the, in the offering plates, or you can join those online uh, by going to gracebhm.org and uh, giving there. Again, we're so glad that you're here for worship this morning.
when you're right here I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to notice you are speaking feel what you feel I want to see what you see Lord I want to love like you I want to feel what you feel I want to see what you see no I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen Just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to notice You are speaking I'm not in a hurry When it comes to your spirit When it comes to your presence When it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. Open my to hear you speak tell me your thoughts what's on your mind I'll be your friend I want to see through your eyes I want to see through your eyes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to I'm the director of children's ministries, and I want to invite the kids. You can come on up, Jack. I want to invite the kids to join me for the children's moment. You all can sit on the ground. That'd be awesome. Can you sit on the ground? On the ground. I know. This stage could get us in so much trouble. It feels like it's so much room that we could dance and run around it. Okay. So I have some questions for y'all this morning. Okay. The first one is this. Raise your hand if you're already kind of in Christmas mode at your house. Like, raise your hand. Have any of you put, already put your tree up? Yeah. Have, have any of you listened to Christmas music? Have any of you watched a Christmas movie? Oh, my goodness. So many kids getting to jump on Christmas. I love it. Okay. 
Me too. We are in full Christmas mode at my house. And it's so much fun, but it's such a busy time of year sometimes, isn't it, right? We have so many things to do and so many people to see and so many amazing things to do. And that's wonderful. But, oh my goodness. I want to hear all about that when we go to children's church. So it's so easy sometimes this time of year when there's so much to do to get really busy and forget that God calls us to rest because we can get so busy that we don't even enjoy it, right? Okay, so raise your hand if you like to take naps. No, listen, um, Miss Amanda's going to make you a promise. When you get older, you will love a nap. You will love to take naps one day. I promise, even if you don't now. Um, so, but it's really hard for us to rest sometimes, isn't it? But we need to remember the Bible invites us to rest and it reminds us over and over again that, w- that we need to rest, right? So in Sunday school, we talked about the 10 commandments. And do y'all remember we said, we can kind of think of them in two ways. They're teaching us what? God's rules for how to edit. Do you remember what the Ten Commandments were? You said it this morning and you're so good. Um, We said they teach us how to love God and how to love each other, right? That's kind of how we can think about them. And one of those rules was that God reminded us to respect his day of rest, right? And we also remember that when God made the world, it says that he created for six days and on the seventh day he rested too, right? So will you guys go to Children's Church with me after we pray and we can talk a little bit more about that? Does that sound good? Yeah, you can bring this with us. Absolutely. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you invite us to rest. And in this time of year when it's so busy and there's so many good, fun things to fill our plate with, we just pray that you would remind us to rest so that we can see you in all of those things and also um, so that we can enjoy them. And um, we thank you that you made us to rest. And as the, as the days get dark earlier, we pray that that would be a reminder to us to, to join you in your invitation to rest. Thank you for loving us. Help us to love each other. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. They're reading to you from the book of Genesis in the second chapter, starting in verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he'd done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time in the month of November, we have been talking about gratitude this month. I know, kind of, uh, you know, predictable in some ways to talk about gratitude during this time of year, Uh, but always a good thing to be mindful of, especially as we finish up the Thanksgiving holiday again now, and as we prepare to wrap up, as I said, this end of the Christian year and begin the new Christian year starting next Sunday with the first Sunday in the season of Advent. And each Sunday, as we've been talking about gratitude, I've wanted to look at gratitude from a little bit of a different angle, or at least that's how I've phrased it. We haven't been talking about unusual things, just things that don't necessarily come to mind first off the top of our heads when we're thankful um, and talking about making lists of things that we are grateful for. So we talk regularly about family and about health and uh, about you know having food on the table and that kind of thing. But We also, this month now in these worship services, talked some about God's gift of salvation for us in Jesus Christ. Um, We talked last week about even finding good and God's goodness and reason to be thankful during the, the most difficult, painful, or challenging times of our lives. 
And today I wanted to talk a little bit about Sabbath because I know that this is something that many of us talk about when we think about Thanksgiving holiday or when we think about Christmas or we push towards Christmas because as soon as Christmas is over, then we can finally rest and we're, we're eager to take that deep breath, but we also know that this time of year, which is supposed to be fun and festive and joyful and restful, is also crazy, chaotic, not so lose our minds, snap at the people we love, that kind of thing, right? So I want to talk about Sabbath, and I want us to hopefully enter into this hectic, breakneck-paced, crazy time of year with as much focus on rest and the rest that God desires for us as possible. And maybe, just maybe, we will make a little bit of a difference in our lives and in the lives of those around us, around us as we think about Sabbath. So to start us off, I've pulled together a collection of quotes that I've come across over the past couple of months about Sabbath and rest, and I think that they are relatively thought-provoking, and each one of them pretty different from the other. So let's take a look at those. It is easy to imagine that the next great devising of the world will be between people who wish to live as creatures and people who wish to live as machines. Next one. In the nitty-gritty of my daily life, repentance for idolatry may look as pedestrian as shutting off my email an hour earlier or resisting that alluring clickbait to go to bed. Next one. Because people are so busy, because time is the most precious commodity everyone has, most people feel that they cannot possibly waste Sunday doing nothing. Without recognizing that there are limits written into nature by nature's God, there is nothing to keep humankind from transgressing nature, including human nature, to reshape it in our image. When God says today, the devil says tomorrow. All right, well, I'm just guessing on the number of mm and ooh that I heard from you that some of those quotes struck a nerve, right? I mean, there's something in there that's, uh, that, that feels personal to us. There's some of those that you say, ooh, that's a good one, or wow, hadn't thought about it that way. And uh, that's why I chose them. So that's just sort of setting up what I want to talk a little bit about today with all of you. I read uh, that in 1967, you're, you're hardly going to believe this, and you can go fact check this later if you want to. In 1967, the United States Senate set up a subcommittee to evaluate what will happen in the very near future when machines will become so efficient that we will have more money and more time on our hands than we know what to do with. There was a subcommittee in 1967 that said, Americans will have so much leisure time, we're going to run into problems, right? And instead, we all know what's actually taken place. Maybe compared to a lot of cultures, we do have a lot of leisure time. And we spend an incredible amount of money on leisure time and entertainment. But we also know that all of the things that have been manufactured and invented to make our lives become more efficient and give us more downtime have actually just made more time to keep working. And so most people, including many of you, if not most of you, would probably look at your lives and say, yeah, I don't think that downtime is something that I have in abundance right now, or that I am not looking for more ways to fill my vacant hours on the calendar, but instead you're talking about how busy things are. And so I think it's worth going back to this really ancient idea, going to the back to the beginning of the scriptures, to the book of Genesis, and to look at this idea of Sabbath. Because from the beginning, it's been there. From the beginning and through the, the covenant with Abraham and, and, and Moses leading the people out into the wilderness and establishing the time of Sabbath and honoring that, that has been a part of the story. It has been a part of the formula for the people of God to follow this pattern of taking time for downtime for Sabbath. But I think that most of us would really resonate with that one quote that says, I have way too much going on to waste a Sunday doing nothing. Did that one 
strike you as one of the most convicting quotes on there? I mean, I know that I feel that way. And I am perhaps as guilty or more guilty than most people because I say, well, I have a, an honest defense here, which is I work on Sunday and on holidays. So this is sort of normal for me. So Sunday is never going to be a day of rest, but that does not get me off the hook of taking another day to be a Sabbath day. And so I think that we have this love-hate relationship with Sabbath, where we love the idea that if we want to take advantage of Sabbath, we can do it and pat ourselves on the back and saying, aren't we being holy and pious? But there are also times when we might also pat ourselves on the back for being so industrious and so productive and such good providers and doers that we then say, and I can't possibly take that time off because I am too important. Or the things I need to do are so valuable that they can't be set aside. Or I have to do things today, like shopping or lawn care or whatever, because Monday through Friday and Saturday too is going to be, I mean, I've got plans and my schedule's too busy and too important. So there's a hubris involved in this whole thing. But that's a very different way than Sabbath is intended to be celebrated. I'll talk about that in just a second. So this winter, coming up in the new year, will mark the 10th anniversary of Snowpocalypse, which I think about from time to time. We missed out on it, unfortunately. We moved here that summer, so we missed out on it, but we laughed at you from afar at the news. <clears throat> and now that I'm here, I understand a little bit more about how that could happen and the icy roads and lack of equipment and the hills and all that stuff, right? And I know, uh, but growing up, uh, growing up way up north, I know what a snow day is. And in fact, we had more cold days than snow days. And cold days were days that we weren't allowed to go to school because the bus stop would have been too dangerous to have kids waiting for a bus more than a few minutes. And so we had these days where we saw them coming in the weather forecast. We're predicted to get a ton of snow overnight or it's going to be so cold that schools are already canceled in advance. And I loved those days. I mean, I loved those days. Now, granted, just... I didn't worry about, you know, whether the power would go out, and I didn't worry about whether, about people going into labor on those days, and I didn't worry about, you know, essential workers and those kinds of things, and just sort of selfishly in my own childlike world, I was just pretty keyed up about snow days or cold days, because that meant that you were in for the day, for the whole day, and there was nothing you can do about it. I mean, there's something really nice about that. It was, it was cozy. You had enough food to eat. You made a fire in the fireplace. You turned on a movie. You curled up with a good book. You got underneath the Afghans. You played video games, whatever you did. But it was like, it was a free day. It was a free shot. And nobody ridiculed you, and you shouldn't feel bad about the fact that you couldn't do anything because, hey, we're snowed in, or we can't go outside. I think that that's a little bit more of the mentality that people who practice healthy Sabbath actually have around those kinds of days. I was reading a book uh, that uh, uh, pastor and theologian Lauren Winter wrote a few years ago about Sabbath. And she grew up Jewish and actually converted to Christianity. And she says that of all of the things that she misses most about Judaism, it was the practice of Sabbath. And kind of like that, that snow day mentality, like it's coming, Get ready for it, and when it arrives, there's nothing you can do about it. So you might as well just relax and enjoy it. She quotes another author in that book, a Jewish author, who talks about all of the ritual that she and her family go through. Yes, there's the grocery shopping on Thursday. There's the meal preparations as soon as they get home from work on Friday. There's the last shower before the sun goes down. And then she talks about as soon as the sun is setting, and the books are neatly piled in the corner, and the lights are dimmed, and the food is already on the table ready to eat, and she just says this wave of peace washes over us, knowing that until sunset tomorrow, there ain't nothing you can do about it. And she said, no, in fairness, there's times that it may be a little bit dull, and in childhood it may be a little bit harder than in adulthood, but she loves the idea that in order to be the best adherent to her faith that is possible, that she must set all of this other stuff aside and just relax. Just set it down. Just take in 
the Sabbath. And I think that that's really the idea behind it. Sabbath is not a penalty. Sabbath is not saying, take these things that you have to do and don't do them and feel bad about it. And I think that there are different ways that people observe Sabbath, and some of them are, are more sort of fundamentalist and strict than others. But I think that when Sabbath is practiced in a healthy way, it's a great thing, it's a gift. And really, that's the point. So if we go back to the origins of it, and we go back to Genesis 2, as I was just reading about, the idea is that God, as Amanda said to the kids, God creates for six days and then rests. And we are supposed to follow that pattern. And basically what has been taught through Judaism and passed on to us in Christianity is that what isn't allowed on the Sabbath is creation. Don't create stuff. Don't create work. Don't finish work. Don't make things. Don't bake things. Rest. Because if God can take a break from creation for one day, then certainly you and me can too. And that's the point. And that was one of the other quotes, right? Because if it's God's nature and it's not our nature to command, then we should be following in the pattern that God set for us. And when we violate that by creating seven days a week, then we never have the downtime. Walter Brueggemann wrote a book a couple of years ago called Sabbath as Resistance. I think at least one of our small groups has read through that book. But one of the points that he makes in that book is that when we don't pause, when we don't stop for at least a day, we become the machines of the future that Wendell Berry was talking about in that quote. We become the kind of people that are so industrious that we never stop. And we become, pardon the cliche, but we become more of a cog in somebody else's system than we do as people who are trying to live out our God-given identity and created order of being people that rest at least one day a week. And it becomes about how much we can produce, which is about how much we can earn, which is about how much we can buy, which is how much we can consume, and so forth, right? And I don't think that any of us look at the ideas of working seven days a week and then getting in stampedes on Black Friday and say that this is how God created us to be. This is not the image that we are going after. Now, I'm not gonna say, and maybe this is wrong, I'm willing to say that this might be against what God would want. I could be wrong about this. But I don't think this is ex as extreme for us as we can't get in a car, we can't turn on a light switch, we can't pick up a paintbrush, right? Because some of those things are life-giving to us. Some of those things are about recreation, which we would call recreation, and they are life-giving in a way that actually is restful to us. But the point is, and the point I guess I'm trying to make to you as we enter into what I think most of us would agree is the most crazy time of the year, and wonderful, is that we don't think about Sabbath. We don't take time to appreciate this gift that God has given us. We don't rest, and therefore we don't enjoy to the extent that we could because we feel like we have bought into this false idea that more is better, endless work is about a good work ethic, and that this is actually how we can be our best selves. In fact, I think that from the beginning of the Christian and the Jewish story, there's something much more important for us to take away from this. And that is when we do rest, not only are we potentially more productive the other six days of the week, but we will find greater fulfillment and enjoyment. And in that sense, it's not just about God's gift to us, but about what we can give back to God as well. How can we be better to our neighbors? How can we be better in service to the world? How can we be better in worship and giving God our best selves? Because how many times have we not come to worship because we were too dang tired from the past six days? And if that's the case, then man, have we gotten out of whack. So I would invite you, this isn't even a challenge, this is just an invitation. To 
try to be a little more mindful of Sabbath. If you're like me and Sabbath can't happen on Sunday, then pick the day that it's going to happen. Say no to some things so that you can say yes to others. Set down the work so that you can pick up the scriptures. Don't participate in one commitment so that you can participate in another. Take more time for friendship. Take more time for prayer. Take more time for service. And live into Sabbath as God has desired for you. And I think that we might just be participating in an act of piety, of resistance, and of life-giving gift that our God gave to us, not to be a burden, but to be a blessing. And if we do that, I think that we might find we might have a richer, more holy, and more blessed season of Advent focused on the things that matter most. Will you pray with me? God, in some ways, Sabbath feels particularly difficult because there's something ingrained in us, either because we've been taught it or been praised for it, or maybe the culture has influenced us in this way, but we, we say that to work ourselves exhausted is a virtue. But we don't want to participate in small ways that we are actually saying that you could rest, but you could rest, but we refuse to. We control nature more than you do. God, help us instead to have lives that are more in balance. And maybe that begins with something as simple and as powerful as the gift of Sabbath. Whatever small ways we take to making that improvement or change in our lives, we pray that you would guide us and help us to stick to it. Help us to recognize the gifts of this blessing that you have given us and help us to make that go both ways so that we might bless you in return for the ways that we care for others, cultivate relationship, and worship you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's stand and sing. Let's praise God for God's faithfulness, which we model our lives after.
As we wrap up a holiday weekend and prepare for the week ahead, I pray that you would find some time for quiet. I pray that you find a little bit of rest. I pray that you have time of centering that draws you nearer to the God who gives you the gift of Sabbath and rest. And I pray that as we enter into this season, that you would be able to focus yourself on that which is most important, the incarnation, the gift of God's love for us in the form of Jesus Christ, and the preparation that is required for us, for us to fully enter into that experience. And now, as you go this day, I pray that you go in peace and in celebration and as remembering that you are baptized as Theo was this morning, celebrating all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice. I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to When it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice, I'm learning.